And we're live. Thank you all for joining us. We have Paul here in the waiting room, and we're so excited to celebrate 10 years since the film's release. None of us had any idea that it would have the impact that it's had with over 50 million views in every country worldwide. And it's been picked up on some major broadcast stations in different parts of the world. And most of all, we're thankful for all of the people like you who are tuning in that have really spread the word about it and helped so many people's lives. So we're thankful to have been the stewards that were behind the scenes answering all of your questions for the last 10 years and doing our best to relay information from Paul. But we're also really thankful to connect you all directly with Paul today so he can give you his gardening tips and answers straight from him. So here's Paul. <laughs> Say hi to Paul, everyone. And we're going to start reading your questions. You guys have already started sending these in ahead of time. So, Paul, the first question that we have on the list is, what is the recommended amount of soil to lay on top of paper and then wood chips? And so people just want to know how to get started with the method. Well, I wouldn't use any soil. I would just use wood chips. Don't, mm -hmm. don't bring any soil in. Let me t let's talk about topsoil. If you ever look at a house that's being built, the first thing they do is they bring an excavator in or a cat to move all the topsoil off, like a big, big pile of it. Yeah. And that pile immediately turns green with weeds, immediately. But if you go to places sowing topsoil, you see these beautiful piles of black soil, nothing's growing in it. It's totally sterile. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the stuff they say is topsoil is not topsoil. So don't ever buy soil unless you know where it came from, real soil. Otherwise, just put wood chips on whatever you have, and the wood chips will change it and make really good soil out of it. Mm -hmm. That's really good advice. I hope that answers your questions. And um, as far as the the depth of the layers of wood chips, um, would you? In a garden, we you going to grow seeds, like four inches max, because you got to move it away to access the soil to plant your seeds. If you have established trees and, and you know, blueberries and stuff, put as thick as you want because you don't have to access the soil. Perfect. And would you say that people, when would people need to add an extra layer of compost underneath? What does the creator add compost? <laughs> Every fall. And, and, and the timing is so significant because he brings rain and snow to create compost tea to build the soil. When do farmers fertilize? In the spring, which is stupid because you're wanting to, the, to grow things in the spring. It takes time for that stuff to access the soil. So mm -hmm. if you just look at nature, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay, the next question is, um, how often do you reapply wood chips? When needed. <laughs> that's, an, that's a foolproof answer. <laughs> that's very true. You definitely have to observe to know when to add them. So. See, and it breaks down quicker in different soils. If you have really poor soil, it breaks down fast. If you have good soil, it breaks down slower. So it varies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It definitely does. When you start to see a bunch of weeds come in, that's always usually an indicator that you might need to add some more. Mm -hmm. So um, the next question is, um, I wonder if Paul could comment on the use of hay or straw as compost, please. People using that as a covering. Every living thing turns back to dirt. Hay, hay and, and um, straw is great. Now, the challenge with either one of those is they have seed in it. Mm -hmm. And you can get whatever that was growing back. And so that is a challenge. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. The next question is, when and how do you trim your fruit trees? That's a big question. <laughs> I prune my trees all, all summer long, which is really important. What amazes me, if you look at orchards, how incredibly stupid these orchards are. They let all this new growth at the top of the tree grow all summer long, creating all this shade and taking all this energy out of the tree, going to cut off in the winter. Why let it grow at all? When it first starts with little buds, just rub it off with your hands and keep that whole center clean. Let mm -hmm. the energy go onto the tree and the fruits you want to keep. Mm -hmm. Now, during the winter, when, when the trees are dormant, is the most accessible time to, to prune because the leaves are out of the way and nothing else to do. And mm -hmm. so that's when I do my major pruning. But all summer long, I'm cleaning all those upright shoots out so I don't have those taken away light and energy from my tree. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. The next one. Um, someone asked, "Do wood chips work for cabbage?" 
because specifically there's okay. been a lot of talk in the permaculture community and stuff about um, fungi, wood chips mm-hmm. producing fungi, and that um, the trees will mess with the soil food web and um, that cabbage won't be able to grow because people say that, um, you know, that basically there's certain things that need bacteria more than fungi to grow. But um, what would your answer be to that? Well, that lady who did my soil test told you the answer. It was perfectly balanced. There was fungi. There was everything in there. Perfect balance. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, if you if you guys haven't um, gotten a chance to go check out Paul's um, soil microbe video with Keisha Wheeler as part of the summit, oh my gosh, you've got to check it out. She discovered uh, microbes that they've never identified before, and um, you'll see the answer to that question there. So. The next question is, um, why do we need to rotate the crops and must we consider the soil food web of the specific crops? Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what they mean about that last part, but do you rotate crops? Well, let me answer the, the first is you shouldn't rotate crops because nothing in nature is rotated. And mm-hmm. secondly, there's no issue. In, mm-hmm. in, in the wood chip environment, everything is there to satisfy every plant. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, for an example, up. I'm growing blueberries. Next, I'm growing blueberries. Go ahead. For, for an example, I'm blooming, growing blueberries next to lavender, which is the opposite of pH. Lavender wants alkaline soil. Blueberries want P, um, acid, and I'm and both are growing together and thriving because it's 7.0, which is what wood chips are, is perfect center of balance, mm-hmm. and everything grows well at 7.0. Exactly. Someone else said, um, Paul, first, thank you for your generous servitude to all of us. We're extremely grateful. I noticed in a video that you feed your grass clippings to your chickens. They say I do too, but my husband does not fertilize the grass with chemical fertilizer. What do you do to maintain the grass in your lawn? The same thing nature does. Nothing. In the fall, winter, the grass dies and feeds itself. Look at patches all over the planet. No one does any work. They're totally su- sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true, and and your lawn is so beautiful. So it is amazing that that's all that you have to do to it. It really is a great lawn. Um, the fire ants. Someone said they were having an issue with. We've heard this from a couple people in different um, regions. I guess that they've had issues with fire ants and wood chips. Um, They sting their feet and their hands, which is no fun. Do you have any recommendations for that? I've had people with fire ants, not necessarily in witches, just where they show up. And I told them, get chickens, build a chicken tractor, and put it over that area. They'll they'll get rid of every single ant. And they've called me back and said, I cannot believe how well that worked. The ants are completely gone. The chickens took them all out. Wow. That's amazing. Um. Can Back to Eden get rid yeah, of... Chickens, chickens are amazing. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, maybe that's a part of the same... Maybe that'll be part of your answer to this question, too. How do you get rid of wireworms, and does it build up nematodes? Um, so me has two questions. How do you get rid I'm of finding, wireworms? I'm finding that in healthy soil, there's no issue with any... Everything is balanced. Mm-hmm. Nature takes care of it. Care of it. And so you see, we live in a, in a culture that's very um, allopathic medicine oriented, treats symptoms, which is not the, pro- not, not the way to deal with it. If, if you get a healthy soil, healthy plant, you don't have wireworms, you, have, you don't have issues. Now, with, now it, it, in carrots, you wanna move them from you know, different places to avoid wireworms, don't plant them in the same place, move them somewhere else, get it in a new area, and then um, you, wireworms won't be there. Mm-hmm. That's a great answer. How long should I leave the wood chips on the soil before planting? Doesn't matter. <laughs> you can put wood chips you can put wood chips down today, move the wood chips back, plant your seeds, and then move the wood chips around the plant when they come up and you're good. Or you could wait a year. It doesn't doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. How about, um, how can you do a back to Eden garden in a small apartment space? I had a lady call me who had nothing but concrete in, a, in an apartment place that says, go, go to um, Home Depot, get two by 12 boards, make yourself a box, put comp- good soil and compost on top of it and grow on top of the concrete. And she had a great garden. 
That's amazing. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't take much if you if you don't have access to the soil in just a little container, it'll work. We've seen it and done it ourselves too. Mm -hmm. um, someone said, let's see, what do you do at the end of the season with your vegetable plants? I feed them to the sheep and to the chickens. <laughs> Oh, that's a great... oh, I do that through the whole growing season. Whatever I use, my, my, my livestock gets. It's a good full circle system. And then all of that comes back into the garden. So mm -hmm. let's see. How do you deal with, with cabbage moths? That was really, really interesting. When I first came here, I had cabbage moths and it took out all my fall crop of broccoli. Mm -hmm. and, and this is when I used to roll it from my garden. And then when I started putting wood chips down, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I, ha I planted my fall crop. I says, I'm gonna move some of those bro broccoli plants into my wood chips just to, to thin them. And what amazed me that year, all the stuff in the garden, the till garden totally died. But in the wood chips, they didn't. What I heard inside was when the moth came across those wood chips, it was too hard of an environment to put his you know, eggs in. And he went to the soil. It's not accessible to moths. It's a, it's a rough environment. <laughs> Wow, that's really incredible. Go ahead. Um, someone asked, what plants uh, would you recommend growing under your trees? I think that one of the new things that you're super excited about is planting stuff under your fruit trees. And we could see in the video that you're growing like a lot of different things, but what exactly are you growing under your trees? Pretty much everything. But what I love about, you know, squash plants, I was growing Hubbard squash, I mean, um, spaghetti squash, which is, a, you know, squash plants are flat to the ground. They don't climb. Those squash plants literally climbed into my tree, and I, I had spaghetti squash in my trees like apples. It was hilarious. <laughs> wow. So literally. Sweet peas, you know, you have to stake them. Well, if you plant them on your trees, they'll grow in the trees. You don't have to stake them. The trees will hold them up. Wow. So again, so many advantages with growing under trees. It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Um, someone says, um, have you ever, ever had a problem with the source of wood chips you've gotten? For example, what if pesticides were sprayed on the trees? You know, I, ha I haven't had any problem, but see, I'm mostly getting trees from people who are, who are pruning trees that are not sprayed. They're not, you know, there's the fruit trees, I mean, excuse me, ornamental trees and stuff, and they're not sprayed. So I haven't had any problem. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Yeah, usually from the tree services, mm -hmm. it's like you can always ask if you're worried about it, but um, most people don't have problems with that. Um, someone asked if you use biochar and what you think about biochar. I don't use particularly biochar, but I use all my ash from the stove. Mm -hmm. And what I think about wood ash is that wood ash has the highest mineral content of anything on the planet. Nothing is more mineral rich. And when you think about it, when fire goes through wood, all this left are minerals. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is there. And so it's really potent, mineral-rich material, wood ash. Right. That's a great answer. Is there, um, let's see, someone asked, can I use hazelnut shells in place of wood chips in my garden? You can use any organic material because it all turns back to dirt, no mm -hmm. matter what it is. Everything turns back to dirt eventually. Somebody asked, um, do you have molds grow under the mulch? And if so, is it harmful? And I think that people actually ask us that a lot, that they'll see um, molds or even mushrooms that are popping up. And um, a lot of times they write us really concerned that the wood chips did something bad. So, yeah. see, see, mushrooms are, are a fungi and they're living in, a, in an environment that's, that's, you know, will support fungi. So it's mm -hmm. a healthy thing. Right. If you like a look at them, just knock them over, let them, let them compost and turn back to soil. Right. <laughs> um, a lot of like repeat questions, like another person asking how long to leave the wood chips on the soil before planting, especially if they have heavy clay soil. Someone lives in zone 10 where it's very hot and dry. Um, how long should they wait? Well, you don't have to wait at all. It's not, as soon as the wood chips get there, it's going to start changing the soil mm -hmm. and it will never end. Mm hmm. Someone's worried about um, palm trees as a wood chip source that they don't, they've heard that they don't break down easily. Um, is this something that they should stay away with as far as you know, stay away from, or um, would that be okay? If you have an alternative, use it. If you don't, palm will work. Palm will mm -hmm. eventually break down. 
Someone asked, um, what about voles and moles? Um, someone was saying, does this mean that there's something that is lacking in my soil or anything that I am doing wrong in my garden if I have voles and moles? No, it's saying you have a healthy garden because there's food for them to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would you, how do you control or suggest that people who have a problem with that would control voles and moles or still be able to grow food? Either get a good cat or trap them. I trap both. I use different. I use a. I use for the vol, the voles. I use a number two rabbit trap. And what's cool about the wood chips? The voles will make little trails, and they go. Th and the, and what I do is I move the wood chips away. I lay. I lay that trap right in their trail. I come running across it and see it, and I catch them every time. And then and then I use a Victor mole trap for the moles, and I get every one because see my sense is this is private property. They're trespassing, mm -hmm. and they're not walking here. <laughs> That's great. Um, how far apart do you plant your fruit trees? That's a great question. Listen, you, you got to get this. Never listen to the producer. They tell you you can plant dwarf trees 10 or 12 feet apart. I asked the creator, he said 15 minutes. I'm telling you, 15 feet apart, all my trees are touching. Mm -hmm. And see, what these people that grow them don't get is they're growing in, the, in, in completely compacted dead soil. They've never planted a tree in healthy living soil. Mm -hmm. they, I have roots from my dwarf tree that actually go out 35 feet. Now, dwarf trees are planted in, into rootstock that doesn't develop roots. And I got 35 foot radius on a dwarf tree, 11 years old. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, definitely in the drone footage um, of Paul's new tour of the property that's in the summit, you can see that the, the branches are all just almost touching each other. And some like are touching the wood chips on the ground with just the, the fruit hanging on the ground. It's, it's beautiful. Their growth is amazing. See, my, my challenge is, you see, everybody's trying to bring their tree, prune the trees down. I'm trying to get mine up. I can't, <laughs> I can't get an elevation because it, the fruit's so heavy, bends all the branches down. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Let's see. Um, a pest, another pest question um, is um, with pests, squash bugs, and cucumber beetles overwintering in wood chips, much of a challenge. Have you ever had a challenge with those showing up in the wood chips because they hide in them? I don't find any challenge at all with bugs unless you have poor soil. When your plants are not well, the bugs will get them. If you have healthy soil, healthy plants, the bugs don't bother them. Mm -hmm. So true. Oh, when my neighbor comes out here one day, she says, do you have any lettuce left? The slugs ate all my lettuce. He says, oh, right, help yourself. And he's noticing the slugs are right in the grass next to my lettuce. He says, how come the slugs are in your lettuce? I said, it's full of water. They don't want to drown. It's all about health. Yeah. Speaking of that, of like drowning, um, someone says, I live in Texas. The spring is very wet. Any advice for battling slugs? <laughs> they ate all of my seedlings. <laughs> Because your seedlings weren't healthy. That's that's what it was. I'm telling you, I have slugs here. And I have a lawn right next to my garden where they're there. But they never touch my vegetables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And getting good seed um, seems to make such a, a difference, too. What's that? Getting good seed, a good source of seed, seems to make such a difference, too. Um, yeah. I know that's... Seed is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Yeah. So despite the um, wood chips... Um, Let's see. Someone says, I still have a major invasion of periwinkles. What can I do? Pull them. Get rid of them. Mm -hmm. you know, any invasive weed you have to remove, you know, you, and you can't let it go to seed. So you, you, you want to totally eradicate it. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first year um, at the Back to Eden Garden that we installed here in Southern California, there was a major weed infestation. And we just did what you said and really got on top of pulling all the clover and, um, this year, there's been none. So it's, it takes some work at first. It's called management. you got to manage. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. But in the long run, it's it's so much better. There's so much less weeds now, and they're so easy to pull, like, like you always experience. Let's see. What vegetables do best in containers? Um, this person has a south-facing patio. What vegetables do you want to eat? <laughs> I always ask that. This, Whatever you want to eat, you can make grow anywhere. You know, they, they may spill over the container, but you just deal with it. But, you know, you want to grow what you want to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. They have so many 
good varieties now that are even like um, dwarf size, like tomatoes and stuff. So mm -hmm. there's plenty of things out there that if whatever you want to eat can work. Um, people asked, what about eucalyptus chips? If you look at nature, what, what, I, what I, well, I asked that question to the creator because he will tell me there's something you can't use. You know, the creator has a very interesting sense of humor. He said, did you notice I have no landfill somewhere off in the universe? I'm taking all the stuff you can't use. Mm -hmm. I started busting up. Everything in nature falls in the ground and decomposes. Now, now eucalyptus, is, it takes a little bit longer to break down, you know, but I'm finding that I'm using everything and it, I've never had a problem. Yeah. Yeah. We've heard that from other people as well in Australia and other places. They've tried it and they've been okay. So, yeah, I think that it's all right. Going back to talking about seeds, somebody said, where should they get their seeds or where do you purchase your seeds from? I'll give you two good sources. One is Fedco, F-E-D-C-O, and the other is Johnny Select Seeds. They're both in Maine, and they have really good quality seeds, and they're not connected to um, Monsanto or, or any of the, you know, the um, I say, modified stuff. Right. Right. That's great. Yeah, we love their seeds, too. So we've definitely tried them side by side, other companies, and um, the Fedco ones really outperformed. They're used to being grown in more organic conditions, which mm -hmm. makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Let's see. The next question is, if the soil is really bad, should I put a layer of cardboard or newspaper down before the four-inch layer of wood chips? It's not the condition of soil. It's, a, it's, a, it's what's growing on it. If the soil is clean, I don't care how bad it is, put nothing down. Just put wood chips over it. If you got a lot of weeds, you want to put paper or cardboard to kill the weeds. Perfect. Um, let's see. What do you recommend we plant in a – basically people did the – they used the park strip area, like you said, that Ron Finley does, the space in between the sidewalk and the street. What would you recommend um, on such a small portion of land if it was you having to deal with that small of a space? Plant vegetables that don't get spread. Don't plant squashes. They're going to be all over the place. Mm -hmm. So plant like, you know, lettuce, spinach, you know, cilantro, um, upright plants, things that, things that are, are more compact. Great advice. Um, this person, Adele, said, um, we have tons of rhododendrons on our property and we are planning to get a chipper shredder. Are clip chippings from rhododendrons safe? Clippings from everything is safe. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Nothing, yeah, no, nothing is is not bad, not, not okay. That's great. Yeah, and once things break down in compost, I mean, it's really, it it's all soil. So <laughs> let's see. Um, we plan to use morganite compost wood ash, topsoil, and wood chips, all free. We hope to plant a fruit tree guild of medicinals under our fruit tree and nut trees. Do you have one? <laughs> um, I'm not sure if they are asking if you have a fruit tree guild. No, I just grow fruit trees. I, I, I have no connection with anything. Yeah, okay. This, this is my home. <laughs> So let's see. Um, someone's like, I just moved and the soil is compact and dead. We're composting all of our kitchen scraps. We put down wood chips. Do you have any suggestions on how to bring the soil to health quickly or do I just need to be patient? Water. Water really increases the breakdown. Mm -hmm. If you keep it wet, it'll break down quicker. That's yeah. good advice. Yeah, that makes sense too. Now that I learned so much that the microbes depend on the water. So, um, do you need to water um, after seedlings take, even in the drought? Yeah, because you see, they don't have much of a root system yet, and mm -hmm. so you want to make sure they have plenty of water until they're established. Mm -hmm. How you how you know the water is the end of the day when it's when it starts to cool off? Look at the plant. If it's upright, looking great, it's fine. If it's looking wilted, water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when seeds come up through the wood chips, could I put another layer of newspaper over the chips the second year and then just put more wood chips on top? No. When, if they're in the wood chips. You want to pull them out because they're going to keep growing. Mm -hmm. They'll grow through the, more wood chips. Mm -hmm. So get them pulled out and just stay on top of it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, someone says uh, it's really hot in the California desert. Most of the flowers fall off the tomato and pepper plants, even drying up on our cucumber plants. Do you have any suggestions? Water. <laughs> and you're, like you, t you talked about your shade too from your fruit trees. Mm -hmm. um, that, that really helps. You, yeah. if, you, if you have trees, the shade really helps in warm climates to grow things. It, it filters out the sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize how little rain you actually get there, too. Yeah. So it's... Um... We have the same as San Francisco. It's not, not a lot of rain here. This year is a really dry year. Very, very dry this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you grow a winter garden? I have food in my garden all winter long. I'm getting ready to plant now for winter. Lettuce, spinach, cilantro, arugula. That's going to grow the whole winter. I have, I have beets I've already planted. They'll be up all winter. I have carrots will be all winter. I have a lot of food in my garden all winter long. And how do you keep the roots warm considering it gets below freezing there that they asked also? Wood chips are an amazing, <laughs> amazing. Let me just give an example. Up in Canada, it gets down to 40 below zero. Mm -hmm. What in nature dies? Nothing. But everybody's <laughs> farm next to nature with exposed dirt, everything freezes and dies. Wake up. Wood chips <laughs> on insulator. <laughs> It's so true too. We got one, like um, someone gave us a thermometer to test the soil temperature this year. And um, we tested the difference in between the soil covered with the wood chips and the one that was just bare. And it was like 10 degrees difference. So it, it really is such a difference. Yeah. So let's see, do you, working on a 10,000 um, square foot, Pulled up all grass. Should I put cardboard down and wood chips down before treating the soil with amendments? I don't know what amendments are, but I, I'd avoid that. But you don't need to. If you got the weeds out, just put the wood chips down, and they're good. I tell you, look at the forest. What amendments are used there? <laughs> and there's no healthier environment on the planet. Right. And yeah, like so many uh, grasses can even just be smothered by the thick wood chips alone, yeah. too, like you said. Eight, eight, eight inches or more usually kill all the grass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's pretty easy. <laughs> so we have, um, let's see, can cedar wood chips be used? We get this question a lot. Are there any precautions to take using cedar? I have lots of cedar trees on our property. If you look at nature in the woods... During the summer, when it gets hot, cedar trees will flag, the interior needles will turn brown. Then in the fall, all that falls in the ground and no one rakes it up. Everything around is growing fine. And what I'm getting in, in the spirit is that the tannic acid in cedar is toxic. But by the time it gets to the roots of the composting process, it's not there. Nature is amazing. The creator who designed this system didn't miss anything. And he designed such a way that whatever problem there may be in, in the material through the composting process is all eliminated. Compost is an amazing system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cedar is amazing too because it um, deters pests, right? Isn't that right? What's that? Doesn't cedar also deter pests naturally? Yeah. So that's, that's a good plus too. Let's see what else. Um, do you have beets and carrots in the ground all winter? We have three feet of snow on the ground at once here. It doesn't bother. Snow doesn't bother beets and carrots. Actually, when it freezes, the, the sugar content comes up. They're way sweeter in the summer. In the winter, they are in the summertime. They taste better. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's amazing. So the wood chips are an insulator. That snow will never, never do any damage to that plant with the wood chips over it. It insulates. Mm hmm yeah, I had never tasted a beet or a carrot as sweet in my life um, until I came to your place and tasted them. And I was amazed just seeing them come up through the snow. I was just like, are you serious? <laughs> Preserved in the ground. Um, do you put wood chips where you keep your chickens? No, in the chicken pen, I just bring all my yard waste from the, from the yard, all the grass clippings, all my expired plants. And the chickens break it all up and, and compost it. You'll, you'll see in the back end film, you actually see, you know, where mm -hmm. I, I'll take that out of there and screen it. And that's what I use for soil because it's really nice soil. Mm -hmm. Would dark beetles, um, let's see, would darkling beetle frost help improve soil and get rid of pests? I've never heard of darkling beetle frost. Have you? I haven't. I haven't. 
Okay, we'll skip that one. Let's see. This person moved to Alberta from Ontario. They're leaving their forest garden behind, um, and it's a challenge. I figure five years before I set up in the right place. Any suggestions to speed it up? Speed up the wood chip process. Water. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. And uh, and Paul also gets composted um, wood chips. That can help speed it up. Um, you can get compost. Yeah, if they're older, you know. But again, it's just, you know, water really helps the process, breaking it down. Right. That's a great answer. Uh, somebody asked, are there any good books that you like on gardening, soil, or, or anything to do with having an orchard that you would recommend? You know, um, you had I haven't... us read like Ruth Stout when we were there, which was really um, inspiring, and the uh, One Straw Revolution. Yeah, Masanobu. Yes. You recommended both yeah. of those. Yeah, those are great because they get the they get the significance of covering. They understand. Yeah, those are great ones. Yeah, we realized that it's just like a handful of people, really, in the whole world that are promoting, you know, no till and no dig, and um, we were having a whole discussion that you will really will be remembered for that being like a crazy movement that you're definitely a part of um, pioneering. But, but, but if you look back at our history in this country, the first nation people understood, mm -hmm. they never killed. Mm -hmm. They totally died. Mm -hmm. They understood. Don't disturb the ground. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. It's getting back to an ancient way instead of really inventing something new. Yeah, a lot of people ask us, um, one of the big questions that we get a lot is like, um, basically like they have a lot of grass or weeds and they're just starting out. They're like, can I just till it one last time um, before, you know, don't putting down the wood chips? Do I need to till it? And um, we are curious what your answer would be to to that. Well, we know we know when you till soil, you lose 60% of the food value afterwards. Mm -hmm. So you call it microbes. When you till in grass, all you do is spread it out. It's going to grow right back. You didn't remove it. You just spread it out. Mm -hmm. So it's completely counterproductive to till grass. Mm -hmm. Totally counterproductive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've heard um, people that are doing conventional farming and um, trying to manage the weeds by tilling that they're having to go through the rows once a week just to keep it under control. So it's just a massive amount of labor. I can speak from experience. I used to do that. I know exactly yeah. what that is. You're a slave. You're a total slave. That's and then wild. you're killing the soil every week. You kill the soil. Right. Yeah. Charles Dowding is like another um, no dig market gardener that's based in the UK. And um, we asked if he had heard of you and he said like, yes. And that people all the time say, why don't you do what Paul does? And in his mind, he's like, I totally do exactly what Paul does. And um, he, he just uses compost and then he uses like wood, ch uh, wood chips for the pathways. Um, and so he was saying about how you treat your vegetable garden is basically like you are adding compost from the chicken run um, and that you also add the screened wood chips. And so in our opinion, it's, it, you guys are kind of doing like a similar. Yeah. People were process. confused a little bit in the film about that part on our um, end to use the same language of wood chips for the raw wood chips mm -hmm. and the composted wood mm -hmm. chips that people didn't always understand walking away from the film okay, well, wait, what's the difference? How come this one looks a little bit different and more dark and more like soil? So that was something that we wanted to um, help people clear up is to understand like the difference between composted wood chips and raw wood chips in terms of um, the best ways to use them. Both work. It's just that the, the compost is further along in the breaking down process. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's definitely, it's uh, it can be confusing language because people call mulch so many different things. People call compost so many different things, wood chips. So it's like, it's good to try to clear it up for people to understand that composted wood chips mm -hmm. are just wood chips that are broken down and you can add vegetable scraps or to what, whatever you have to them. So mm -hmm. that'll just add some extra nutrients. Let's see. Someone asked if you've ever used worm castings. And what's your opinion about them? Worm castings are wonderful. They're really great. But my sense is create an environment to bring in worms and have them mm -hmm. make castings right in your yard. Why, why import them? Worms will do it right there. Right. <laughs> so true. 
Okay, let's see. Someone else says that um, they're starting a food forest and they're going to use the back to Eden method. Do you have any suggestions on planting fruit trees from seed? The problem with the planting of seed is it won't be the same as the original because mm -hmm. it was cross pollinated. Mm -hmm. The only way to maintain true variety is to take a, a cyan wood and graft into rootstock. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to be something different. Now, mm -hmm. maybe something better. You know, we keep coming up with new varieties like honey crisp and and, and um, cosmic crisp because they get their their cross crosses and they're better, but they could be worse. And so you just well, you can plant a seed and you have a great new experience because you never had one before. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, somebody else asked, "Do you keep bees, honey bees?" I have I have mason bees because honey bees are not native to America. They're brought from Europe, and they're not good pollinators. Mm -hmm. Because in April, when night trees are blooming, it's cold outside. Mm -hmm. And bees are home and have honey. They don't go outside. It's too cold. Where the mason bees have no food and anything that blooms, they're on it. So they're far better pollinators than honeybees. Wow, that's interesting. Um, somebody else asked, how long after you applied wood chips, did you see a real change in your soil? Was it just a year or two or did it take longer? You see it immediately. I get people, I get phone calls from people. I put wood chips around the trees and, and their leaves are getting greener. Well, yeah, <laughs> life's happening. The result, the result is immediate and it never ends. This keeps improving continuously. Mm -hmm. So true. Wow, well, lots of questions coming in. We're trying to keep up, everyone. Thank you for interacting. Let's see. Um, we're trying to start a food forest using the oh, back. We just did that one. Okay, we did so that um, someone says, I don't have access to chicken manure. Is there any other type of manure that's best for the soil or rock powders, minerals, bone meal? All those things are fine, except today you got to be careful with manure because what are fed to animals today are toxic. Mm -hmm. They're fed hormones, mm -hmm. grow, you know, um, antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And so what I love about wood chips is they're clean. You don't have any issues. They're completely a clean, safe material. Manure is okay, but make sure you know where it came from because it could kill your soil. I'll give an example. My other news magazine, they had an article. This family had a garden for decades, a family garden. They went and got all this cow manure and they filled it in. The next year they planted it, everything died. Well, the farmer used 2,4-D Agent Orange on his pasture to kill all the broadleaf weeds. And the cows ate it and it was in the grass, in their gut, in their gut and in their, in their manure, and it killed their whole garden. Oh my gosh. So it's serious. So you got to be really careful with manures nowadays. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. I have heard that people are having a lot of problems with that, not not realizing the source of their manure, and it ends up killing all of their um, food, mm -hmm. all of their crops. So mm -hmm. that can last for years, apparently, the yep. effects of that. So yep. um, can you add your food scraps to the wood chips, or should you compost separately? You know what I love about wood chips? The, you know, food scraps out in the garden bring in all kinds of birds and everything else. But the cool thing about wood chips, you can pull the wood chips back, put the put the, the stuff on the ground and cover it, and nobody knows it's there. <laughs> it's totally out of sight. It's awesome. <laughs> it's really true. It's kind of like what Ruth Stout would yeah. do with the straw, it sounds like. <laughs> Someone says, I have access to composted wood chips. Do I still need to add manure to it? I would never add manure. I My whole orchard has been here for 40 years. I put no manure there at all. Mm -hmm. You don't need manure, but wood chips do it all. Look at the forest. How much manure happens there? Mm -hmm. Occasionally a little bit here and there, but not much, hardly any. Yeah, I really agree with, with that. And that I think that when we first started off, we thought that, you know, we were going to need to add more nitrogen sources. A lot of people think that because of thinking about all the carbon. Mm -hmm. But when you look at how green, all the green leaves and everything in it, like you said, in nature, that that's all adding in the, the nutrients that you need. And mm -hmm. that Linda Chalker Scott, the woman you met, the soil um, and uh she studies wood chips is like her main study um, as a scientist. And she found that most of the time people don't need to add any um, manure or fertilizer at all to wood chips for it to be healthy soil. So you're right on. Well, you know, people come and look at my orchard, you know, these scientists, they tell you wood chips type nitrogen make your soil acidic. Mm -hmm. the, the color of the leaves of my trees is like totally over the top. I mean, Miracle Grow could never do it. And I asked him, explain to me the nitrogen tie-up. It's not here. 
it's not happening. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely not. When you don't till it in, there's no nitrogen tie up. It's amazing, right? Um, Somebody asked, uh, what do you do with your sheep? We actually get that question a lot that people were wondering if you um, keep animals and if you have sheep in your pasture. I have sheep in my pasture to keep my grass down. Mm-hmm. You, you, know, you know what causes deserts in Africa? It's taking livestock off of pastures. Mm-hmm. And now they're bringing them back and totally restoring pastures. And I like sheep because sheep are not heavy and they, and they don't compact the ground, but they're constantly eating the grass and that stimulates growth. Mm-hmm. And so my pasture is much healthier having sheep on it than having nothing on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's mm-hmm. so true. That's the way that everything kind of used to be. Let's see. Another question is, can you speak about what to do with soil or fertilizing? Um, regarding garden towers, the pots that stack on top of each other, um, which you use when you don't have land. We actually like have people ask that a lot if you use anything like that and that they don't like them because they have plastic in them. And they don't like, you know, basically, is it even safe to grow food in plastic containers? Well, I don't like plastic. Plastic is really toxic. But in any container, if you make compost tea, that makes, you know, get, 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 get your compost and run water through it. Water with compost tea, that's going to feed it really well. Mm-hmm. That's a great answer. Um, okay, yeah, like there's several questions that are all kind of talking about how to kill tenacious grass. And um, somebody asked us once, like, how deep, what's the deepest amount that I can put down of wood chips? Like, can I put down more than 12 inches? My place in the squim had quack grass. We're talking like that wire quack grass, which is impossible to remove. When I plant my fruit trees, I thought, I'm going to fight this forever. <laughs> and so what I did, I put the wood chips down a foot deep. We're talking 12 inches around my trees. And what shocked me nothing came through mm-hmm. it killed all and see the, the reality is any plant that has no light and air i don't care who it is is going to die mm-hmm. without yeah. light and air you're going to die yeah. mm-hmm. it yeah. works right <laughs> yeah on that same note that um some people they'll they'll put down their wood chip garden and they'll put the wood chips way thick and it will be great but then they have grass growing right on the border and they don't add any border piece like a piece of wood or anything to separate it from it could you describe how you keep the grass from growing into your um wood jet plot the nicest border and the cheapest is concrete and the beauty of concrete is that you can use that little quarter little quarter inch you know um uh, wood for a uh, uh, um border and you can make bends you make a little four four inch thing put concrete and it lasts forever looks nice always clean and it's cheap it's much cheaper than wood, and wood breaks down. Wood will rot. It's a great tip. Yeah, that really does help people um, not have to keep fighting the grass com- from coming in because it does love to creep in if you don't put anything on the border. Especially if you have good soil. The grass, yeah. I don't think here. It's good food over here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it loves growing, and it's not a bad thing. <laughs> Do Have you ever had a soil test, someone asked? Well, you could answer that question. <laughs> yeah, we just did. Um, so we just did a soil test um, with Paul. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the soil food web and Dr. Elaine Ingham, um, one of her students named Keisha did a soil um, food web test, basically, where she did an analysis of Paul's soil. And we had him, we collaborated with him, had it overnighted to her place in California from Washington. And um, it was in the highest heat wave, so you'll have to go watch the video. But um, the results were amazing, considering especially that there was a heat wave. Everything, all the um, soil food web, the life came back, and you saw it all moving. There was nematodes that were reproducing. There was unidentified um, microorganisms that were really interesting. Um, And she found that it was like one of the best um, results that she's seen out of countless um, Mm -hmm. tests that she's done. So that's specifically looking at the soil microbes and the um, fungi Mm -hmm. and the bacteria, which was fascinating to see and it just looked phenomenal. So that really proved how alive um, Paul's soil is with under the wood chips, even in the summer. Um, which apparently when it's wet in the winter, it's even more so. 
And then Paul's also had other soil tests before um, that even when we were there, we in back to Eden film, we did a um, soil test that was pretty basic, so showing the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and the pH levels. And if you watch the film, you'll see the um, results of that um, towards the middle of it. And uh, it was perfect. Like you said, it was right in the middle, right where it needs to be to grow anything. <laughs> as far as having healthy soil, do you think that having healthy soil impacts the flavor and the taste of the food that grows in your garden and your orchard? Well, of course, you are what you eat. Everything. <laughs> I mean, this, you know, let me just give you an example. This is huge. For 6,000 years recorded in human history, there's no record of anybody using salad dressing anywhere in history for 6,000 years until after 1948, they started using chemical fertilizers. And the salad didn't taste good. And the thing, what happened to the flavor? They used salad dressing to mask the funky flavor. Mm. I'm telling you, it's all about what you eat. Yeah. You are what you eat. When you eat nutrient-dense soil, you taste good. If you're eating nutrient-dead soil, you're going to taste bad. <laughs> <laughs> so <Thank> true. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys haven't seen the um, interview that Paul referred to, the no, no-till no could be up to 60% um, higher in nutrients, the crops that they studied, um, that you have to go over and watch that interview with Gladys Zanotti um, from the Rodale Institute that she studied no-till organic versus just organic conventional. And the results were astounding that the, the difference of one crop that she studied was over 60% higher in nutrients from just being no-till, mm -hmm. even though they're both organic. So pretty phenomenal that you do taste the nutrients when you grow this method. Right. So let's see, moving on to the questions again. What about um, Canadian thistle? How do you get rid of Canadian thistle? When I came here, my whole pasture was full of it. And I went out there with a four inch shovel and dug it out, every single one of them. When I couldn't get to them, I'd break them off. It took me years, but I had not one thistle in my pasture today. I won. It took mm -hmm. diligence and effort, but you can get rid of them by removing them manually, mm -hmm. digging them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone asked, we actually get this question pretty um, often, actually, that do you give your garden a rest or Sabbath um, anytime? Or I've heard your answer before to this, but... I asked the creator about that because I wanted, you know, when I... When I, when I caught on to this. I says, God, I want to do things like you do. So can you help me? I see in your word, you tell the people to let the garden rest every seven years. God, how do I make it rest? What do I do? Go, go I pick all the apples off. I, I almost sense like a mm -hmm. smile from him. He says, if you notice in nature, it's resting all the time. I never put my garden rest because it's always resting. That was written for people who are under the effect of the fall who are tilling. Mm -hmm. When you till the ground, it's stressed and it needs to rest. But in your garden and in nature, it's always resting. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's true. All right. How do you handle pests such as boar worms? I've been trying container growing, not even on the ground, and still manage to get boar worms in the squash and zucchini. Well, I don't have any. <laughs> So I don't know how to answer that question because I don't have any insect problem anywhere in my yard. And I used to have my trees, when I first came here, I had every issue. I had scab, I had leaf curl, I had earwigs. And today I have done, so I know what I'm talking about. When you have a healthy, rich soil, insects do not bother your plants. Mm -hmm. can, I can I tell you what insects are all about? You see, I was told in school insects are pests. Did you go to that school? Right. <laughs> But what I had a problem with the creator whose essence is love wouldn't create a pest. That's not love. Mm -hmm. So I asked him about the insects. He says, they're not pests. They're my police patrol. Mm -hmm. I created insects to maintain a healthy environment. And how they work is they go around and take out all the stress dehydrated plants. So only healthy plants produce seed and maintain healthy plants. You see, if insects left weak plants to grow and produce seed, mm -hmm. the plant would become extinct get weaker and weaker. And so insects maintain a healthy environment. They remove all the weak and only the health survive, healthy survive, mm -hmm. creating seed and maintaining health. Mm -hmm. They're really an asset. That's so true. And they, they definitely, like you showed us too, really do know when something's not doing well. And they also help break down the 
um, material that sh that isn't doing well so and turn it into soil so mm -hmm. that's a great answer I love that can wood chip gardening allow vegetables that normally need full sun to grow well in partial sun? Let me tell you that this, and the answer to this is going to blow your mind. I live in Western Washington where you cannot grow figs and I'm growing fig trees and I'm eating them right now. They're just delicious. Fig trees grow in Mediterranean warm climates. I have under a weeping willow, a huge weeping willow, totally complete, 100% shade. <laughs> a fig growing that has figs on it in full leaf. We're talking not partial slate, a hundred percent shade. And the reason I have it there is my figs get ripe later and I extend my fig crop, but I'm flipping out. There's no sun. There's not <laughs> none. And this is thriving there. And my explanation is nutrient dense, rich soil, period. <laughs> It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you'll see that in Paul's interview in the yeah. summit that um, you see the, the fig tree growing in the <laughs> chicken coop right <laughs> under the willow. <laughs> it's amazing because literally like I've seen, I've tried to grow a fig tree in a pot like in full sun and it's perfect conditions without those right soil conditions, it won't even grow. <laughs> so it's really all about the soil. When your crops are done producing, is it better to pull the plants out completely or to cut them off at the base and let the roots compost naturally? It's a good one. I, I was raised in a Swiss German culture. <laughs> Everything is in order. And having stumps and roots in my garden, having all kinds of trash in my garden is unacceptable. It doesn't look good. And so I pull everything out because I felt like things neat and orderly. And when I'm raking and grading, getting ready to plant, if I got roots, they're going to be in my way. <laughs> it's an inconvenience for me to leave roots. Yep. It's a good answer. So yeah, it's fine either way, but if mm -hmm. you don't want them, then don't leave them. Mm -hmm. Do you use companion planting and diversity to increase your plant's health and flavor? Never. That I read about all that, but I've never done it and I grow really good stuff, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, they all seem to be companions in your garden. <laughs> Everything's thriving. Nothing's not. I mean, what, <laughs> how can I make this better? How yeah. can I improve it? <laughs> <laughs> They're good friends. <laughs> Do you uh, use yeah, cover crops? No, but cover crops are great if you live in a place you can't get wood chips because cover crops will create a, 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 a organic material that will feed the soil. Mm -hmm. So uh, In North Dakota, the, uh, um, Dr. McCool is interviewing a guy that had the most incredible experience. He says, my soil was totally dead. And I was so frustrated because I never saw any worms. He, start, he started using cover crops. He says, what amazed me as I'm watching my plants grow now is that the worms are starting to come back in my soil. And I'm discovering that the roots of my plants travel down the wormholes because there's no resistance and it's lined with worm castings and it's better food. And it was so interesting, his you know observation. Mm -hmm. And so cover crops, if you have no wood chips, is a really great resource to re, you know reestablish healthy soil. Mm -hmm. Again, it's about covering. It's all about covering. Whether it's wood chips or a crop, it's about covering. Mm -hmm. And some people till in the cover crops after they never, grow them. Never, never till. Just leave it on the ground and compost and feed itself. It goes back. Awesome. Is partially composted sawdust from a mill okay to use or is it too fine? It's not the, it's not the consistency. It's the material. You see bark and sawdust has no green leaves mm -hmm. and they're sterile. Nothing mm -hmm. grows in them. Yeah. You see how people put bark on their yards. They got to fertilize mm -hmm. because there's no life force in that material. If you look at nature, very rare does a tree fall over leaving the bark and the wood. Mm -hmm. But every fall, needles and leaves fall on the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, just connect the dots. Pay attention. That's significant. It's a really good point. That's really true. Uh, you said that nitrogen shouldn't be an issue, but my plants weren't thriving and uh, did much better after I added blood meal. How do I know if I should add more nitrogen and how much and how often? Blood meal, any addition is great. Plus, it's always good. You know, you don't need to, but if you really want to speed things up, blood meal is awesome. Um, have you heard of bamboo vinegar? I haven't. Me neither. 
Um, do you have any recommendations for plants like wild rice, uh, which I've been told need to grow at least six inches underwater? I had rice growing out in my orchard <laughs> in, in wood chips with absolutely no water the whole summer, thriving, yeah. green, totally beautiful. I'm telling you, it's a lie. Yeah. You know, and, and that and that and that guy in Japan, he's on he's on a, on a hillside on a, on a total slope growing rice. It's not in water, and it, he does it every year. Yeah, one straw revolution that we talked yeah. about earlier. You guys, if you want to check that out, he's on a slope. There's no no water, no standing water, and he's growing good great rice. <laughs> it's wild. Um, are there any vegetables or fruits that you will never grow, or are you open to trying anything? I only grow what I want to eat. If so, if something good shows up, I want to eat it. I'm gonna grow it. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting close to four o'clock, you guys, and yeah. we don't want to take too much of Paul's time up. So we'll ask a few more questions, but we're going to try to wrap it up um, pretty soon here. So um, let's see what some of the last questions we have here. Um, <laughs> people are, someone asked if they are having a big problem with um, thistles, if they should use a tarp to try to smother them, or is it better to dig them up? The tarp won't, won't won't solve it. That that root goes deep, and they're they're hardy. You mm -hmm. gotta get the root out. Mm -hmm. Do you use wood chips along the exterior of your house? No, but it's no problem. I, I, I around, around the exterior of my house is just it's a gravel drive up to the front, which is just just the ground. But wood chips up against the house. You see, people are worried about like you know um what um those buds that are um get, get in, um the get termites. In, Termites and stuff, yeah. and, and see, termites will not live in wood chips. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Termites are in dry, dead wood. Wood chips a living environment. It's totally alive, and termites don't go there because they, they, they want something dead. I think this is like a good last question. Um, is there anything that we wouldn't know to ask you, but that you are currently learning from the Creator in this season? Every time I go out there, I learn something new because it's always expanding. It never ends. It's just one of the last things I learned was, was so awesome about just the power of the wood chips. When I came to my place and planted my trees, my, my ground was compacted clay and rock. We're talking like compacted. It was so hard to, to plant my trees. I had to use a bar and a shovel to break the ground to plant the trees. So a couple of years ago, I wanted an Asian pear. I didn't have one. So I had to go out in my orchard to dig an apple tree out to plant it in that place because that's the only place I had. So I went out with a rake and a shovel and I began digging this tree out. I'm down a foot and a half in the most total beautiful black compost I'd ever seen. And I'm flipping out. I says, God, what's up with this? And I know what this was. And this is what he told me. He used that scripture. As we behold the Lord, we're being changed from glory to glory. He says, as that dead, compacted clay came under the influence of the wood chips, it's being changed from glory to glory. That says, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> wow. I love that, Paul, because it really is a perfect metaphor of how you sharing everything that you've shared from gardening to your relationship with God has really had that same effect. It's dramatically changed everyone that it's touched, and it's really covered the entire world. So. It's, um, it's pretty overwhelming and um, very humbling to be able to be part of sharing all of that. And um, we really appreciate everything that you've continued to share with the world. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Of course. Yeah. We're... Can't believe it's been 10 years <laughs> since we put this movie out. <laughs> I'm, I'm flies when you're having fun. Right. <laughs> it really does and um yeah we look forward to the the next 10 years of sharing it and watching it grow and staying in touch with you to answer all the questions that we all keep getting together <laughs> all right well thank you so much yeah, thank, thank you so you. much for your time and um we yeah. appreciate everyone who tuned in to ask the questions if you guys still have questions feel free to reach out watch back to eat and film it'll teach you a lot through mm -hmm. just the visuals and um you can uh, tune in at backteedenfilm.com if you have any other questions. A lot of the answers are there. Thank you so much, Paul, and have a wonderful rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>